This episode is brought to you by Fort Macon Marina in Atlantic Beach, dedicated to your boating needs for the past 48 years. Today we're continuing a series of interviews that we're doing in a preparation for the Atlantic Beach King Mackerel Tournament and during the King Mackerel Tournament. As a matter of fact, this portion will be broadcast and podcast. And I want to thank the folks at the Atlantic Beach King Mackerel Tournament for making this possible. And the program is an important program, one that is more than just a fishing tournament. As a matter of fact, it's, um, I think the impressive part about this is the uh, slogan, We Fish for Life. And what it's about is literally... Fishing for Life-Saving Services. And uh, one of the primary beneficiaries, I say primary, really, secondary. Well, the primary beneficiary are all those citizens and individuals who might find themselves in a state of distress. The primary recip- Those are the primary recipients. The secondary recipients are those that are actually providing that service which is the Atlantic Beach Fire Department and Rescue Department there in Atlantic Beach. And uh, we have joining us this afternoon, Mike Simpson, Chief Mike Simpson of the Atlantic Beach Fire Department. He is, interestingly enough, the third (laughs) fire chief, if I'm not mistaken, for the department. So uh, we'll talk about that as well. But this is an important story because it is providing services to a a broad community. And uh, earlier we were talking with uh, Renee Baker, who is a member of the Atlantic Beach Town Council, and she pointed out that total population for Atlantic Beach is 1,700 permanent. But during the summer, it's a little larger than that, by tens of thousands larger, and they are, the many many instances, the primary beneficiaries of the services provided by the Atlantic Beach Fire and Rescue Department, as well as the life-saving service, a lifeguard service there. We have joining us this afternoon, as I mentioned a moment ago, Chief Mike Simpson. And with that, Chief, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, and thank you for having us. And, you know, Chief, I just said a few moments ago about the aspect of the Services rendered by Atlantic Beach Fire Department, Atlantic Beach Fire and EMS, I think is the proper description. You know, a lot of us think, oh, uh, it's just a small town fire department. It's not a fire, small town fire department, is it? No, not at all. Um, our, our geographic size is pretty small, but, uh, you know, in terms of the services we provide and the amount of calls we get, we're we're fairly large for, for well, the area. I mean, you've got a, you've got the summer traffic. I mean, you, Ab- <clears throat> absolutely. I mean, we tens sh- and twenties. Well, twenty and thirty thousand people at a time. Oh yeah, we shoot up to about uh, ranges between thirty five, fifty five thousand. You know, okay. during the summertime to busy season. And uh, but my, my reason pointing that out is here's a seventeen hundred population community supporting a fire and rescue department that has to service far more people than the uh, general at warm year-round tax income provides. Absolutely. So the necessity of having those revenue sources to help support a department that has to be called upon in a moment with 35 and 50,000 people is pretty pretty significant, is it not? Absolutely. Yeah, we, uh, you know, our services... uh, our taxpayers provide the services to give uh, fire and, and EMS services and lifeguard services, uh, you know, to a, a certain standard, right. you know, across the board. But, uh, you know, we, we like to go above and beyond. And there's, you know, we are a small department and we struggle with keeping up with the, the demands a lot of times. So uh, that's one of the things this King Mackerel Tournament helps us with is going above and beyond that, that standard level of service and being able to provide additional equipment, additional services, and a higher quality of care to our citizens and our visitors. Again, I go back to the fact that in the summertime, in a moment of uh, distress, <coughs> such as with, uh, uh, and we're going to be talking about this with the lifeguards and, and uh, uh, drowning victims or, or maybe uh, individuals who suffer medical distress of some fashion or fire or accidents, you know, the the resident the, the individuals that are facing that when they're in the city of Atlantic Beach are fully expecting Atlantic Beach being able to provide those services. Mm-hmm. Yet, 
again, I go back to the comment. Atlantic Beach is a city or a town of only about 1,700 people full time. That's correct. So as you just mentioned a moment ago, and again, we're promoting this in respect to respect of and for the Atlantic Beach King Mackerel Tournament, which starts, by the way, I failed to mention this at the opening, starts October 4th with the captain's party. And then October 5th is when the uh, lines go in the water. And for the next three weeks, uh, the uh, Atlantic Beach King Mackerel Tournament will be underway. And the nice thing is that it, it's a week, it's a month long uh, event. So weather uh, is not a problem. You, you, yeah. If you can find time to fish in that period of time, you can participate in the Atlantic Beach King Mackerel Tournament. Again, we're talking with uh, Chief Fire, pardon me, Fire Chief uh, Mike Simpson. You know, Mike, the other aspect of this and all the services necessary is the cost of those materials and those products. And that's one of the things that the King Mackerel Tournament has been uh, providing. And it's interesting, uh, in talking with um, Kurt Winborn, who's the president of this year's tournament, as well as, uh, as we ta- I mentioned a few moments ago, um, uh, pardon me, the uh, city council per- person, I'm trying to think of her name right off, uh, Renee. Re- Renee, Renee uh, Black, uh, as Renee uh, Baker. Baker. Thank you very much. I, I had it a few <laughs> moments ago. Anyhow, the fact that um, both Renee and Kurt pointed out They've raised over half million dollars. What has that meant for the uh, Atlantic Beach Fire Department? So, um, what that has meant for us is uh, we have we have gained a lot of equipment that uh, normally would or otherwise would have been the burden of the taxpayers um, if we were able to provide that service. Uh, some in some cases, it's just not feasible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everybody dislikes being taxed to death, and we try to be good stewards of the town's money. Um, but we also want to provide the highest level of service that we could possibly provide. And, you know, we're not just there for life safety, but we're there for improving the quality of life um, every single day. And so what the King Mackerel Tournament's funding has done for us is they've they've given us equipment that we otherwise would not have or would take us longer to acquire. Um, Some of those things have included uh, automated CPR, Mm -hmm. auto-pulse machines, um, those, those items like that are running, you know, at the time we first purchased them, we're running about 15000 apiece. Um, they'll have to be replaced again and be on a regular cycle in order to maintain that service. And if, in the next year or two, we're approaching uh, a point to where two of these auto pulses are going to need to be replaced, and they're no longer 15000 they're 25000 apiece. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things that has helped out – the most with in our in our town is our uh, our ocean rescue and life safety or our lifeguard service um we have fires we have ems calls we have all types of incidents that that come across our board every day all year round but one of the most severe problems we have in atlanta beach is that ocean sitting out there right. that that claims lives more than anything else on atlanta beach and so this King Mackerel Tournament has has focused a lot of funding and a lot of attention into improving our ocean rescue efforts, and uh, by way of uh, ensuring we have a program that we could adequately replace four wheelers and have enough to do roaming patrols, UTVs, jet skis. Uh, they've put in sturdier and, and longer lasting lifeguard towers out. I mean, really heavily invested in our ocean rescue program. And again, I go back to the comment. We're talking about the tens and twenty. You said thirty-five to fifty thousand people that visit Atlantic Beach. They are the beneficiaries. I said earlier mm-hmm. on, they are the primary beneficiaries of this program. Absolutely. I, I mean, am I correct on that? I mean, you you are the provider of the service, but the beneficiary is those who are in distress. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, these these items are are helping our service just go up way above and and a true testament to what what the king mackerel tournament is doing for our service capabilities is um i I mentioned earlier we have focused heavily on our ocean rescue that that is the thing that injures and takes more lives than anything else in atlanta beach and uh because of of efforts like the from our staff and from the, the king mackerel tournament we this past year we closed out our summer season with three consecutive summers and that is the only three years since I've been here, 25 years. 
and that is the only three years in my history that we have closed out any summers. But we have three consecutive summers with no significant injuries or incidents on our wow. beach strand and zero fatality drownings. So that's, that's a testament to what, what this tournament is doing for our department. This tournament, and we're talking about the Atlantic Beach King Mackerel Tournament, and it takes place starting October 4th, and the f- lines go in the water on October 5th and all month long, is an opportunity not only to provide assistance to Atlantic Beach Fire and Rescue, but really to the, again, 35 to 50,000 plus, and by the way, I'm gonna, before we go to the break here, 35 to 50,000 plus visitors that come to Atlantic Beach, but wait a second, Chief, we're gonna talk about this later on as well. You are providing services to Fort Macon State Park. Correct. You've provided services. You're you're providing uh, support services to Pinal Shores, um, Emerald Isle. When you're called upon, you've also your fire department is over in Moorhead City, Newport. You've even gone out of county to provide services. So there's a lot more than just Atlantic Beach is the beneficiary, That's- right? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you you can find our personnel and resources uh, along with other departments' personnel and resources in a number of places, and uh, we are we are all over Carteret County and sometimes all over the state. You know the, that the, and you you are all over the state right now because as we speak, you've got uh, fire fire crew uh, and and a boat uh, doing water rescue up in the mountains. Th- we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and talk about the life saving service. Uh, pardon me, the lifeguard. Uh, facilities and we've got a guest here to talk about that as well but the other point of this is and i think it's important atlantic beach because of that atlantic ocean is not the normal fire department (laughs) absolutely not okay so the needs the expectations the services are far greater and as a result far more expensive absolutely we're talking with uh Atlantic Beach Fire and uh, Rescue, Fire EMS, I'm going to get that right, Fire and EMS Chief Mike Simpson here uh, on Viewpoint. Stay tuned for more. We're talking about the Atlantic Beach King Mackerel uh, Tournament that's starting in just a few weeks. Stay with us. We are pre-recording this portion of the program, by the way, to accommodate Chief Simpson's requirements. He's got a fire department to run. And we have joining us this afternoon a special guest. And I'm going to... um, Rather than uh, introduce Scott myself, I'm going to let the chief introduce Scott. Who have we got, chief? Yeah, with us today, we've got Captain Scott Bell. Uh, Scott Bell is one of our uh, firefighter EMTs. He is a captain on B-Shift, and Scott is a uh, uh, one of the founding fathers of our junior lifeguard program and has, has started with our uh, department Forget what year that was, but uh, we don't need to go into all that. Well, it, come on, Scott. It was, when, when did you start that? It was somewhere um, between two and twenty-five years ago. Yeah, I guess I've been uh, active in the department as far as a paid uh, uh, member of the department for twenty years. Prior to that, I was actually a lifeguard, so mm-hmm. I actually started as a lifeguard out of Atlantic Beach. Um, as did our prior chief and many members that we currently have and have had through our uh, through my career um, started out there as lifeguards and have become full-time employees and members of the uh, Atlantic Beach Fire Department. Okay, uh, let's talk about your capacity as a lifeguard. We have talked a few moments ago about the issue of uh, the four-wheeler, and my question to you on that is, um, what what is the uh, what 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 was the uh, benefit of the four-wheeler well for instance back when i started and we don't need to go into the actual numbers there (laughs) but um back when i started we did have four wheelers we didn't have to you know it wasn't like the flintstones or anything but we had one four-wheeler um was a two-wheel drive a small honda and we used it mainly to uh, get around two incidences on the beach when something happened so we would have to go from the main circle area if there was somewhere um outreach on different areas of the beach we'd use that four-wheeler to go to that incidents put some lifeguards on it and scream down there and and try to get there in time to 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 affect a rescue however that's changed recently um with the influx and the uh, transformative nature of the funding from the kmt uh, we now have uh, two four-wheelers a side-by-side that we can utilize to do patrols that through during the day so it's likely that one of those vehicles will already be somewhere that they can help in, in some kind of circumstance for a rescue. So it's an amazing transformation as far as that goes. And then you also have sea 
I'm going to say skidoos. Um, uh, we do have jet skis. Jet skis, uh, We started yeah. with one. And, of course, jet skis used to be smaller. Uh, we had one jet ski that we had kind of on a little uh, platform with some big tires that we would push out. I remember it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And yep. we'd uh, d- drive that around mostly to do some patrols and stuff. Didn't use it as much. Didn't really have a sled on it or anything. Mm-hmm. It was just a jet ski that could maybe get to somebody and they could hold them up and, you know, maybe, you know, do the rescue from there. And from that, that's transformed into ones with sleds on there. We have two of them. We can do more patrols and, and actually uh, get to the spots on the beach to, to be closer to start with a jet ski and, and effect a rescue. I know this sounds a little uh, strange, but the, you've, of course, you've got swimmers and you've got beach uh, people walking the beaches and sure. things of this nature. So, Scott, when you run into that circumstance where you have to provide those services and you've got to get people out of the way, do they respond appropriately? In other words, do well, they do they understand what you're up against? Well, it, it's different. Um, I've worked at uh, I've worked at the beach, you know, in a resort kind of right. kind of setting. I've I've worked at ski re- ski resorts, kind of a resort setting. Okay. What I've noticed is when people are out of their element, they kind of their judgment kind of Understood. drops away. I, I used to say people drop like ten IQ points uh-huh. when they go on vacation. I'm the same way. All right. I get somewhere and I'm it's I'm familiar and I'm walking around asking where things are and you know there's a big sign that says tickets here and I'm asking people where the tickets are you right, know right. that kind of thing. So people you know lack some judgments. They also they're out of their element. And they're relaxed and maybe enjoying some beverages things like that. So there can be some circumstances that could influence their ability to respond properly. The yes. reason I mention that is, uh, you know, <clears throat> being able to get to the uh, situation, sure. get to the moment of distress for the, the swimmer or the fire or the accident, uh, you need, people need to be cleared out of the way so that you can get to it. And, and, and of course, obviously, that's one of the things you're trained to do and your, your staff is trained to do. Let's talk here for a moment about the whole issue of lifeguards. And the fact that, you know, the, these, I think I would argue that many of us take that position in stride. It's, it's a great opportunity to sit out there and enjoy the sun, the sand, you, you know. But there's a moment when not only are you worried about someone else's life, but as a lifeguard, you're putting your life in, at risk too, are you not? Well, certainly. Um, I can understand that, uh, you know, that perspective sometime. It may look like a Baywatch kind of right, thing, right, you know, right, yeah. or people just <laughs> hanging around, you know, getting a tan and socializing and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, there certainly are elements of, uh, of, of, ver- of excitement to it, and um, it's a good job for that purpose. That's why a lot of lifeguards have come into our business, basically, and gotten to be firefighters because they've been exposed to that and the, uh, the emergency uh, response and that kind of thing. Also, um, you'll find that, that people who do it, um, they have to have a certain level of that, and that's right. how we hire them. Right. Uh, we, but we don't. We're not looking for people who just want to hang out at the beach. We want to look for people who can run and swim to start with, and we we train them to do the rest of it. But it can be a very a very um, terror filled job at, at points, and you have to have judgment and the ability to respond properly. Because you're dealing with a lot of people in the moment, of not only of distress but panic. Yes, their worst, probably their worst moment, and that's a lot of time in EMS or fire or water related things. It's a bad day for them. Yes, you know, we've got Chief Mike Simpson here as well. And Chief, uh, you said something very interesting. This is third year in a row where you've not had a circumstance of drowning or major. Am I correct? Major. Uh, distress or, or yeah no, no significant injuries or or beach related incidents okay that of course is a credit to i think a, a more po- more aware populace i would hope mm-hmm. also better use of 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 warning signs and, and attempts flags being used because we did have a period there uh several years back when we had way too many drownings and um so I mean, there, there's there's a greater amount of effort being put for the benefit of the uh, the tourists. You know, that's an interesting aspect of this as well. The real I go back to my comment at the very opening. The real beneficiaries of all of this are those those thirty five fifty thousand tourists and visitors who are coming every week, and they're they're expecting they they anticipate that you have the capacity 
Scott, I mean, really, they're, they're, they don't even, they probably walk right by those lifeguard towers, not even looking up to see if there's anybody in them. They would be inclined to take that for granted. Yes. I assume. And people are inclined to take for granted their safety in general. And they look at the ocean as a, a kind of a gentle kind of recreational area. <laughs> yeah, it um, is. Up to a point. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I like to make it clear that the ocean's not a good place to learn to swim. No. <laughs> Uh, and, and it can be changeable o- over the just the minutes and, and right. hours of the day. Um, so people have to take care and take some personal responsibilities. It's always better. And people are, as you mentioned, more educated about that. And people <laughs> under- know about what rip currents are. And they understand that. And they understand. They've seen shows where lifeguards go out and rescue people. So right. they're a lot more aware of that kind of thing. It's a lot more focus on that. And that's, that's helped us tremendously. It's an important story. But it's, it's also the uh, result of, and to give credit to, the Atlantic Beach King Mackerel Tournament, the fact they have raised over... Over half a million dollars for services that uh, I think are they have made a big change, have they not, uh, Chief? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's you know we we're going to be there and answer the call regardless. But uh, you know how we answer that call and the the level that of, of service that we are provide is just is is hugely dependent on a lot of things and funds tends to drive things like that. And uh, that's where our King Mackerel Tournament has really focused and let's. You know, you mentioned earlier um, Watts brought down the uh, the, the uh, number of, of fatalities and, mm-hmm. and bad outcomes on our beach. And, we, you know, we can attribute that to several things, um, you know, better training for our, our right. response staff, <clears throat> better manning and, and patrolling of the beaches and things like that, changing our SOPs and our mod- modalities. But, uh, you know, weather is always, mm-hmm. you know, something that contributes. But... Uh, one thing you mentioned specifically was education, and 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 uh, we, over the last three to five years, we have focused heavily on education. You know, and, and news media is like yourself, the News Times, and and t- television stations, and signage and flag systems. I mean, we the Bogue Banks uh, towns, uh, Indian Beach, Emerald Isle, Pineal Shores, and Atlantic Beach. We all came together and said, "Hey, we're let's let's focus on a a collaborated effort. Let's get the same message across." But uh, you know, we can do all those things, but human nature is human nature, and right. people are still going to do what they do. And so it all comes down to having the right resources and the personnel to do it. And that is where our King Mackerel Tournament has excelled in that. Again, just as we prepare to close up, the, we're talking about the Atlantic Beach King Mackerel Tournament, how important it is. And I, I've said this before, and I'll continue to say it. It's not only important for the immediate community, and I mean the immediate, immediate community chief, of Atlantic Beach, or Bogue Banks for that matter, mm-hmm. or Carteret County, but really for the immediate community of all those hundreds of thousands of tourists that visit our beaches and who are basically our guests. Mm-hmm. And we should be aggressive about treating our guests. And we do it through the work of organizations such as the Atlantic Beach King Mackerel Tournament. Again, There's an opportunity, by the way, whether you are a fisherman or not, to contribute. Please consider doing that, going to the Atlantic Beach uh, King Mackerel Tournament's Facebook page. You can go, I'm sure it's also mentioned on the cities, um, the town's website as well. I believe so, yes. Yeah, so there are opportunities there. Please don't pass that opportunity up. And again, I want to thank Chief uh, Mike Simpson for taking the time to be with us, along with Scott Bell. And again, Scott, your title, uh, one more time? Um, I'm actually a captain at uh, Lane Beach Fire Department. Okay, I've been involved are... with the lifeguards for a number of years. I'm a paramedic there also and firefighter. Okay. That's, yeah. All right. And uh, this is a great opportunity. Thank you to both of you for being with us this afternoon. Certainly. Absolutely. Uh, we are talking with Atlantic Beach uh, Fire Department uh, Chief, uh, EMS and Fire Department, uh, Mike Simpson. And Mike, um, we've run a pay- story in the paper about uh, several of your department, as well as the uh, vessel, your one of your water rescue vessels, going to Western North Carolina. And I want to take a few moments to talk to you about that. Thank you for taking the time to be with us here. Um, what what's what's the process? How many how many f- um, members of your staff went to Western North Carolina? Where are they, and what exactly did they take with them? Yeah. So. Uh... 
it, you know, with Landon Beach Fire Department, our, our department, uh, we provide a, a several levels of services, but uh, water and ocean rescue, any type of water rescue is our specialty service. Um, as such, we are a, a type three North Carolina swift water rescue team. And uh, our team has deployed as of Thursday. Uh, I think Thursday we were, the state contacted us, said, you know, they needed us as soon as possible. So we sent a four team crew uh, that went up there and they carried our heavy rescue truck, a couple of uh, pickup trucks loaded with equipment and a uh, newly purchased uh, rescue boat that we acquired this past year. Um, I saw a company that makes the boat is called Whaley Boat and uh, the King Mackerel Tournament was fully funded and purchased this, this vessel for us. And the reason why this particular vessel was funded was specifically, <coughs> excuse me, was specifically for uh, flood rescues and also gaining access to um, our, our sound areas, the shallow water areas mm -hmm. where other vessels can't get into. And uh, one, one of the things that's important to note about this particular vessel is uh, a lot of times we see, uh, we've, we've been deployed to numerous places over the years and used different vessels. And a lot of what we're, we're using are inflatable rafts or inflatable right. zodiac type boats and while those are great options and they're fantastic for that one of the problems that we've had uh, in using them both in flood situations and in local environments is they get holes and they don't hold air mm -hmm. and, and once you start having problems with that it you know it just it just got a trickle effect um, and it, even if it's, if you're in a flood situation, there's so many, like you're seeing right now in Western North Carolina, there's vehicles and trees, street signs, you name it. There's so much debris under the water areas. Um, back home here, oyster rocks, you know, and other things like that. So this particular boat that the, the uh, King Mackerel Tournament has acquired for us is uh, is resembles an inflatable boat but it is a it is not inflatable it is a, a, a polyethylene rigid hull double double line hull and it has air pods inside of it so it's basically practically impenetrable and unsinkable and it's you know we bought this boat specifically for this type situation and so that's what the guys have, are working with up there now um, currently they uh, like i said they they deployed out on thursday afternoon and uh Initially, were staged in Conover. Uh, the next morning, they were downtown Asheville area around wow. the uh, Hannah Cherokee Center uh, during during Friday, and then since since then, uh, up until this morning, as last I heard this morning, they were uh, staged in Swannanoa uh, doing Which, operations. Which, by the way, has been removed from the map. Right, that's yeah. correct. I um, mean that that is just I was reading stories about Swannanoa. One individual was in his house, his family. The house slid down the mountain. Yes. They had to break their way out of the house, but all of them survived. Yeah. I'm sorry, I did, I had to, I, yeah, it's, so it's they're, a, in Swan, they're in Swannanoa. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty tragic uh, situation. Ooh, uh, we have, we have two local county teams up there, our, our, our Swift Water team and the Crystal Coast Swift Water team from Moorhead City, which is a, a collaboration of some mm -hmm. personnel from Moorhead and I think Newport and some other departments, and uh, they're not operating far from each other, but they're uh, they're both in some pretty hard hit areas. Have you spoken to any of your crew? Briefly, uh, communications was uh, tough. Was was out. I mean, cell service, phone, landlines, you know, everything has been out. But I've gotten some sporadic areas where they got a, a, a brief signal and they were able to give a quick call and it was broken up and it was enough to say, I'm okay, we're all safe kind of thing. Um, I did get a little bit uh, more of a conversation with uh, Deputy Chief Arthur last night and uh, got a bigger picture of what was going on. But uh, the crew's intact, but they're working hard. Uh, they are getting some rest periods, but uh, those are few and far between and they are the last I heard, they were teamed up with uh, at a uh, based out of a uh, Swannanoa Fire Department. That's uh, where they were operating out of. But they were teamed up with some of the uh, Army National Guard and members of Task Force Eleven. So, but they've been doing everything from rescues to search missions to uh, logistical support missions, uh, building bridges, 
you know, to gain access to in accessible mm-hmm. areas, whatever's needed to be done. And there's, there's plenty of it to be done. So they're, they're up there working hard. And, uh, any idea when they might be coming home? As of right now, we have, we have no idea. Um, I spoke with emergency management this morning and they're, you know, as we speak, there's more and more resources, USAR teams and other specialty teams arriving from all over the nation, um, even as far as Canada. And there, there's some on the way, some showing up, some already here. And so there's, you know, the, the situation is reaching a point where it's starting to take a transition, you know, okay. you know, so uh, a lot, some of the water starting to receive, things are coming down. A lot of the rescue activity is, is slowing down and now it's more search and, and, trying to see where last i heard i think we were somewhere between 400 and a thousand people unaccounted for right so that that's some ongoing thing so with with all that in mind uh you know trying to get resources there um, access in and out of there has been limited but that's starting to open up for emergency personnel only um so we're, we're just waiting to hear but we're expecting at least seven day deployment uh potentially longer but hopefully it won't be longer and they can get back here sooner I think it's an important story, and it just shows the uh, the success of your programs, success of the Atlantic Beach King Mackerel Tournament, which, by the way, is funded m- vast majority of this, and they're again benefiting folks beyond our immediate area, but also a testimony and a credit to the Atlantic Beach Fire Department and rescue teams there on the training and the capacity that you have established. Congratulations! Very best wishes to you again. Chief Mike Simpson with us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.